Have you ever wondered what it would be like to go back in time? If you went back to Rockport Township in northern Ohio during the early 1800s, you would meet farmers, a scientist, a postmaster, a doctor, a road builder, a tavern owner, and even a rattlesnake wrestler. Second and third graders in Miss Bumel's discovery class worked with Mrs. Maisie Adams, executive director of the Lakewood Historical Society, to study the early settlers of Rockport Township, now Lakewood. The students used photographs, books, maps, a museum tour, and interviews to gather accurate historical information on life in early Rockport. Rockport Township included was now Lakewood, Rocky River, and parts of Cleveland and Fairview Park. It was part of the Western Reserve originally owned by the state of Connecticut. The state sold the land to the Connecticut Land Company for $1.2 million. That was a lot of money. In 1796, the Connecticut Land Company set a group led by Moses Cleveland to survey the Western Reserve. In 1819, Township 7, Rain 14, was named Rockport. When the first settlers arrived, they found a land covered with trees, swamps, rivers, and filled with wild animals. Early settlers were greeted by bear, deer, rabbits, copperhead, and rattlesnakes, many birds, turkey, and fish. Surprisingly, there were few American Indians in the area at that time. By then, the American Indians who used this area for hunting had already been pushed further west. The settlers brought horses with them. The horses were used to pull wagons, haul bricks and sand, clear the land, and for transportation. The early settlers came from larger communities back in New York and New England, traveling by horse, wagon, oxen, and even walking. Once they arrived in the Western Reserve, they felt homesick, so they recruited these communities right here in Rockport. The early settlers cleared the land, making way for homes, farms, stores, sawmills, schools, taverns, and churches along the Old Post Road, which became Detroit Road. Detroit Road was originally an American Indian trail that led all the way to what is now Detroit, Michigan. The very first family to come and stay in Rockport Township was the Nicholsons. James and Betsy Nicholson arrived in Rockport Township in 1819, purchasing 142 acres for $1,336. They first lived with their family in their covered wagon. Then they built a log cabin, then a small frame house, and finally a larger frame house. Four generations of Nicholsons lived in that larger house, which is still standing on Detroit Avenue. The Nicholson family helped to found the first school and the first church. James Nicholson formed the new Jerusalem Swedenborgian Protestant congregation, which first met his, in his home. They later built a church on Detroit. Mars and Katara Wager originally came to Rockport Township in 1820. They bought and farmed land bordered by Detroit, Manson, Warren, and Marlow Avenues. After living in a log cabin for many years, they built a stone house in 1837. Mars Wager helped found the first school. His children and grandchildren became teachers in the Rockport schools. The Wager family ran a general store, a tavern called the Grand House, and farmed their land. Mars Wager decided to use a portion of his land as a family cemetery. He soon opened it to his neighbors. The last burial was in 1891, and the cemetery closed in the 1950s. Some of the tombstones are now at the oldest stone house museum in Lakewood. Education was very important to the early settlers. They formed the first school in Rockport Township in 1829, hiring Jonathan Parshall to teach local students in the home of Mars and Katora Wager. Soon the community built three one-room schoolhouses in Rockport Township. The earliest schools were on log cabins with split log benches, rough wooden floors, and greased paper windows. They were hidden by a wood-burning stove in the middle of the rooms. Surprisingly, these early schools were named 6, 8, and 10. John Honum arrived in Rockport Township in 1830, eventually buying almost 100 acres of land stretching from Detroit to the lake between Bell and Cook. He built a stone house in 1834, which still stands today. John Honum's only daughter, Isabella, married Orvis Hodgkiss in 1837. Together, John and Orvis farmed the land and ran several businesses, including a tannery and a mill. Orvis Hotchkiss became a leading citizen in Rockport. Perhaps, most importantly, he built the Plank Road along Detroit. The Plank Road enabled farmers to take their fruit to markets in Cleveland. It was easier to travel along than the old dirt road, so the farmers earned more money from their produce and more families moved 
into Rockport. Horvath and Isabella Hotchkiss had three children, each of whom married into important Rockport families. Joseph and Sarah Hall arrived in Rockport Township in 1837, buying land along Detroit and Marlow. They had eight children. Each of the four sons received 80 acres of the land in Rockport when they got married. Joseph Jr. received the family land. Curtis built his home near Cranford Avenue. Matthew's home was where Edwards Park is today. John's house was replaced with the Lakewood YMCA. All of the hall men farmed the land growing fruits and vegetables. Rockport's busiest and most famous resident was Jared Potter Kirtland. Kirtland was interested in many things including natural history, botany, medicine, horticulture, teaching, and writing. He arrived in Rockport in 1839, living in on 200 acres of land that stretch from now what is Madison Avenue to Lake Erie, along what is now Bunce Road. On his farm, called Whippoorwill, he experimented with cherries and other fruits, developing 26 types of cherries and 6 types of pears. In fact, he was called the Cherry King. Kirtland lived with his extended family in a large stone house on the farm, which included a beautiful garden full of interesting and unusual plants. He encouraged other Rockport farmers to grow fruit, and soon Rockport was covered with orchards, vineyards, and berry fields. He wrote that grapes, cherries, and peaches never yet failed in Rockport. He often helped his neighbors to improve the soil and to grow better fruit. He described one neighbor, Orvis Hodgkiss, as an excellent member of society, although he has not yet learned to eat peas with a fork, but he is a man of acute and correct observation. Throughout his long life, he studied many things. He also helped to found Case Medical School and the Cleveland Museum of Natural History, conducted a geological survey of northern Ohio, served three terms as state legislator, and gave his name to a mollusk, a fossil plant, a warbler, a water snake, a cherry, a raspberry, and a strawberry. Jared Potter Kirtland died in 1877 at the age of 84. Other early settlers in Rockport Township included Lawrence Johnson, who ran a general store, and the Alger family. When the Algiers first arrived in Rockport, they were so poor they only ate beans and potatoes for five weeks. Henry Alger wrote down his memories of early Rockport. He described Rockport as almost all wilderness, perhaps 30 families, log cabins, few roads, women used to spin and weave, milk cows, make butter and cheese, cook the dinners, work in the garden, and rake. George P. came to Rockport when he was 87 years old. He was one of the first African Americans to live in the community. In 1811, Peake bought over 100 acres of land, which he farmed with his four sons. They also ran a grist mill near the Ro Rocky River. One time, George Peake had to fight off 20 rattlesnakes and four copperheads. After both the plank road and then the railroad were built through Rockport, the community grew very quickly. In 1889, the nearly 400 citizens decided to create the Hamlet of Lakewood, naming Orvis Hotchkiss as one of the first trustees. More and more people moved to Lakewood. These people built houses, opened stores, and created new schools. The early one-room schools were replaced with much larger buildings, including Garfield and McKinley Elementaries and East Rockport Central School, which was built in 1879 as an elementary and a high school. While Lakewood was booming, many of the children of Rockport's settlers used the family land for businesses or even sold it for new housing. Louis Nicholson ran the Lake Erie Nursery on his property, and his brother Ezra Nicholson formed the Rocky River Railroad and created the Nicholson Realty Company to sell off the family land. The Wager, Hall, Kirkland, and Hodgkiss families also sold their family farms for new housing developments. Most of the homes of Lakewood's early settlers were demolished to make way for new construction. Kirkland's Whipperwell was torn down for the Kroger supermarket in 1953. Both of the stone houses built by Joseph Hall and Mars Wager were torn down to make way for new businesses along Detroit Avenue. There are still reminders of Rockport's early settlers throughout Lakewood. 
Many of our streets are named after the early families, including Hall, Matthew, Ethel, Edwards, Mars, Wager, Nicholson, Grace, Lewis, and Bell Avenues. And some of the early homes still stand today. Both the Nicholson House and the Honam Hodgkiss House were saved and preserved by the Lakewood Historical Society. The Honam Hodgkiss House is now the oldest stone house museum in Lakewood Park. The Curtis Hall House is still standing on Cranford Avenue, and both of the carriage house for the Matthew Hall House and his daughter's house can still be seen from Edwards Park. The early settlers of Rockport Township helped to create the beautiful community of Lakewood. They came from far away to build a new life on the Ohio frontier, farming the land and starting new businesses. Because of their hard work, Rockport Township became the fun and exciting city of Lakewood.